Look at the way it's kind of twisted around. That's so beautiful. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm concerned. I'm confused. What's a comforting and creamy dish I can serve when guests pop by? Betty Crocker's answer? Chip beef and popovers. I'm Melinda and I'm cooking my way through Betty Crocker's 1971 recipe card library. Today we're making chipped beef and popovers, which is from section T, impromptu party fair, card number four. I'm very interested in this card because of the way the popover has kind of been ripped open and shoved with creamed beef. <laughs> it's just very, it's a visually arresting photo. And I've never made popovers before, so I thought that'd be fun to give that a try and never made chipped beef before. We could give that a try too. It's really just kind of like, this dried beef in a cream of mushroom soup based sauce. I don't predict it's gonna be very good, but you never know, we'll give it a try, we'll give it a try. So let's get started. Let's not waste any time here. Let's get into the dried beef. <laughs> um, I never heard of this before and I Googled it and I found it and couldn't find it at my grocery store. So I had to order it online from Walmart. Some poor person in Hoboken had to <laughs> package this and ship it to me. And it appears to be like a pepperoni-esque meat that's rolled up and put in a little, put in a little glass jar. I'm very concerned. Um, we need a quarter pound shredded and I have here 2.5 ounces. Now a pound is 16 ounces and a half pound is eight ounces. So a quarter pound is four ounces. So I need, a, I, I, maybe I'll just use both of these. Why not? I'm confused as to how I'm supposed to open it. Is it, I'm spinning and that's not doing anything. I'm pulling up and that's not doing anything. It's giving um, vegan strips. <laughs> it's giving like, like a dog's beef snack. <laughs> Wow, look at that flower. Whoa. Look at the way it's kind of twisted around. That's so beautiful. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm concerned. I'm confused. It's like a bologna or a salami, but it has holes in it. And it's dry. It's drier than that, obviously. Yeah, I'm really getting a flavor here that I'm not used to. <laughs> should, I, should I taste it? I'll do, I'll cut it in strips first and then we'll taste. So it says to shred it. So I'm just gonna kind of like roll it up and cut it into strips. Oh boy, that's funny. <laughs> it's cutting so easily. It's cutting like butter. Should I give it a little taste? It's so salty. Oh. <laughs> it's so salty. Wow. I would say it's actually similar to if you were to take a bite of like an anchovy. It's just like pure salt and like a hint of meat. Yeah, it's like a cross between an anchovy and a pepperoni, I guess. <laughs> Okay, fascinating. I'm gonna keep cutting this and then we'll uh, go from there. I should just use the whole thing, right? I have like one more ounce than I should, but it'll be an extra meaty dish. Okay, well, okay. So now that that has been examined and worked through, um, <laughs> I'm gonna start making the popovers next. Okay, it's time to make the popover batter. So um, the recipe calls for gold metal wondra flour, which I had never heard of. And when I read this, I was like, wondra flour, that seems like something that was invented in the 60s. That's the most 1960s name I've ever heard in my life. Wondra, wondra flour. There's no way they still sell this. Well, I've never seen this before. I have no idea what this is. Apparently it's an instant flour and I found it right on my grocery store shelf. <laughs> there it is. Wondra, quick mixing flour, um, deliciously smooth every time. Yeah, apparently it's like, I don't know, pre-cooked so that it dissolves more quickly and is good for making sauces and gravies. Flour is quick and easy for today's lifestyles. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's confusing to me. Wondra flour. But Betty says, the quick mixing flour blends in seconds with cold milk and no lumps. Popovers rise sky high because you needn't overbeat them. So I trust her. I trust her. So what are we doing? <laughs> we are beating eggs slightly with a fork. Two eggs. Okay, complete. Add milk, flour, and salt. So we have a cup of milk. 
We have a little bit of salt. Get that going. Okay, now we need a cup of our wonder flour. I'm so excited. Hmm. It just kind of looks like very finely milled. That looks like a cup to me. Okay. I've, like I said, never made popovers. I don't know anything about popovers. I've done zero research in preparation for making these today. <laughs> I was convinced that popovers needed a special muffin tin, like one of those like tall, thin muffin tins, but not according to Betty, so that's good. I'm seeing some lumps, but I'm also seeing that I needn't overbeat, so maybe we're good? Beat just until smooth, do not overbeat. She's very specific about that. She says it three times. I'm going to stop. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> All right, let's get them ready to go in the oven. All right, so I have six custard cups here, which it says it makes six to eight popovers. And she says you could use cus deep custard cups or medium muffin cups. So I have these mustard, <laughs> custard cups? <laughs> I have these custard cups, I have them greased, and she says to just fill them each halfway full with the batter. So that's what I'm doing. I'm really nervous about this. I feel like popovers are hard to make. Like what if they deflate? I guess we're gonna fill it with creamed meat anyway. So whatever happens, happens. So let's just make sure they're even. These are gonna go in a 450 degree oven for 25 minutes, and then we're gonna reduce the temperature down to 350 and do another 15 to 20 minutes. So, good luck in there. I'm really hoping for the best. I really hope you guys pull through. <laughs> so what is dried beef anyway? Well, it was first made by the Amish in Pennsylvania. It's a chopped up beef that has been pressed together to form a log before being cured and sliced. Unlike beef jerky, it doesn't contain any spices. It's just the curing agent that gives it a very, very salty flavor. Dried beef was served widely as a military meal throughout history, as early as World War I, and has become kind of synonymous with the military experience. Chipped beef on toast, dubbed SOS or shit on a shingle by soldiers was practical. It was a matter of fact dish that was meant to do one thing, feed the masses. It was a take on biscuits and gravy and was originally made from canned evaporated milk, lard, flour, and dried beef. And it was served on toast, hence the shingle. <laughs> Today, it's more commonly made with a proper bechamel sauce. This recipe of Betty's appears to be a more kind of upscale version by serving it on popovers instead of toast. So I'm excited to give it a try. While the popovers are in the oven, let's go ahead and make our chipped beef. So we are starting in a saucepan here with just a tablespoon of butter. Let that melt. Now our shredded dried beef is going in with the butter and Betty says to cook and stir for three minutes. Just gonna get it nice and buttery. Now we're gonna add in a quarter cup of white wine. And a more questionable ingredient, a can of cream of mushroom soup. This is one way to shortcut to a bechamel sauce. <laughs> now we're just gonna kind of stir this in so it's nice and creamy. <laughs> Cook, stirring constantly until creamy. It's already creamy. Stir in cheese, parsley, and pimento. Okay, so it calls for shredded American cheese. <laughs> and I found this Velveeta, which is kind of like American cheese, right? How much do I need of this? Half a cup? Can I eyeball that? Yeah, get that in there. Get melted, baby. Do your thing, Velveeta. And then I have some parsley and pimento. So I have a nice bit of color in there. All right. <laughs> the cheese is kind of starting to melt nicely and get mixed in there. It's very colorful. I'm, I'm impressed. You know, the photo really makes it look like it's a sauce. Ah! <laughs> Don't burn the card. The, fo <laughs> the photo really makes it look like it's a sauce with a hint of meat in it. But this is meat with a hint of sauce on it. <laughs> I think this is more kind of appetizing looking. Like it's kind of thicker and it's, it's got heft to it. 
It's what something you could fill a popover with. Cool, well now that this is nice and heated through, we're gonna take it off the heat, and then once our popovers are out of the oven, we will assemble. Okay, the popovers are out of the oven. They look cute. <laughs> They look better than I thought they would. They are a little more deflated. Like they're smaller than I thought they would be. And I'm worried that they're not gonna be hollow inside like they're supposed to. <laughs> I put this on top and I flip. Now I can't lift it up. Come on. Oh no. Ha! <laughs> huh, okay. Hey dude. Um. So you're kind of flat. <laughs> you're kind of flat. How do I split it? The photo looks like it's kind of split in the middle. Uh-huh, so... <laughs> so... <laughs> the popover isn't really... Um, empty in the middle, which is what I believe a popover is supposed to be. It's still fluffy. I mean, it looks like a, a biscuit or something. It's so hot. I'm just gonna now do some examination. Ow. Ow. And it's gummy. It just reminds me of the time I tried to make pat a shoe and did it wrong. What did I do wrong? Did I overbeat it? Shoot. Well, like I said, this is interpretation of biscuits and gravy. So what if instead of like opening up the popover, we split it in half like a biscuit and served it kind of like a biscuit. That's something I could do. It's good, it tastes like bread. It just doesn't taste like, it's just not like light and fluffy and empty in the middle like the photo. Shoot, what did I do wrong? Oh, so hot. Okay, go back to where you came from. And they're like stuck in the containers even though I oiled the crap out of them. I'm not blaming the Wonder Flower. The Wonder Flower is wonderful. Should I let them cool? It didn't tell me to let them cool. What did I do wrong? <laughs> if you've ever, ever made popovers in the comments, let me know what I did wrong. These are so sad. Okay, well, it's about the chip beef. The chip beef is the hero of the story. So <laughs> we're gonna plop this chip beef on. We're gonna put the little hat on top and it'll still look cool. Oh, now I'm smelling Velveeta and I'm troubled. <laughs> I'm troubled by that aroma. It's not a popover, <laughs> but it's pretty cute. And we're focused on the chip beef, okay? All right, let's give it a taste. <laughs> Time to taste. Uh, I'm sad that the popovers aren't very good. <laughs> It's okay. We're here for the chip beef, so let's let's dive right into that. It smells so Velveeta y. Did I make a mistake there? I don't know. <laughs> that is the saltiest thing I've ever tasted. No. Oh my god. That's so salty. It's not bad. I actually really like the texture. Like this kind of like floppy bits of beef and this like creamy goop. It's kind of like giving kind of a bit of a sloppy joe vibe, but completely different. Like a sloppy joe made out of cheeseburger goo. The cheese is really prominent, but it's so salty. I wonder if the cream of mushroom soup is also salty. Ow, ow. It's hurting my taste buds. Maybe it's because you're supposed to take it with a bite of popover. Help, help me bad popover. Oh my God. I'm gonna be all dried out. <laughs> Can you have a heart attack from too much salt? <laughs> wow. Oh, it's so salty. It's so, that's all I can say. That's the only flavor. I can't taste any beef. I can't taste any of the other ingredients I put in here, except the cheese. I'm bummed about the popover. I should look up like what an actual popover recipe looks like because something ain't right in here. Something ain't right. Wow, okay. Ooh. I don't know what you would do about that. It's just the chip beef is really salty. 
is really salty. Wow, wow. Okay, I've done some investigation here in my recycling can. This <laughs> dried beef is 53% of your daily intake of sodium, 1200 milligrams per serving. And the cream of mushroom soup is another 860 milligrams per serving, 37%. So that's, um, let's round that up to 40. That's 90 something percent of your daily solid. <laughs> it is so salty. It's so salty. No, no. <laughs> What's funny to me is that I have made so many recipes from this library that you make your own cream sauce. You start with the roux, you add in the milk, and it is always so bland. And the one time I would have needed a bland cream sauce because the meat is so salty, she has me do cream of mushroom soup. Cream of mushroom soup, which is also salty, I think. I don't know, I'm just trying to make assumptions here. What is going on? That was, oh gosh. I like can't even talk about the flavor because I don't think it taste with salt. Wow. I do think maybe if I had a proper popover, uh, and then your bites would be like part bread, part mixture. <laughs> but as it stands now, um, it was not a good pairing that helped alleviate the amount of salt. Wow. I can't, like it wasn't, I can't say it was bad. Like I was, I'm excited about the dried beef. I think the dried beef itself was really fun. I love the texture of it in the sauce. Like, like everything about it was great. It was just so salty. Oh no. And then I'm sad that the popovers didn't work. I granted it definitely could have been some user error on my part. Maybe I did overbeat the batter a little bit. Maybe I should have kept it in the oven longer. Maybe the oven temperature is different than what's, you know, on the display, but Ah, those don't work. Popovers didn't work. Chip beef was too salty. I'm gonna have this to give this one like oh, one out of five red spoons. I'm sorry. You had so much potential. I was rooting for you. Back in the box. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Betty has other recipes for meat served in pastry. So you should check out my video on Jiffy shrimp in patty shells next. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and until next time, happy homemaking.